Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about scroll wheels on your mouse and continuous forms. I'm going to show you how to stop the scroll wheel from moving the records up and down while you're in a notes field in the footer. It's a real irritant of mine too. So let's take a look at today's question. Today's question comes from Lindsay in Maplewood, Minnesota, one of my Platinum members. Lindsay says, I have a continuous form for my customer list similar to the one in your Tech Help template, but I've added a notes field at the bottom so I can read the notes for each customer. The issue I'm having is that when I click on the notes field and use my mouse scroll wheel, it scrolls the records in the continuous form as well. Is there a way to prevent this from happening? Yes, there is. Let's take a look. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website and you can also watch a video that explains how the whole thing was built. I have a customer list. Now my customer list doesn't have a notes field down here, but if you use the mouse scroll wheel, you can scroll up and down. I'm using a little scroll wheel on the mouse. And in case you don't know what a scroll wheel is, it's this little guy right there between your mouse buttons. Hang on. It's it, that, right, that thing right there. You scroll up and down. And yes, I stole that graphic from my very own Intro to PCs class, where I teach people how to use the keyboard and the mouse. So if you don't know what that is, go watch this video. All right, but I'm assuming if most of you are watching this video, if you're using Access and you're building an Access Database, you know what a scroll wheel on a mouse is. Okay, let's put a notes field down here. Now, I already have a notes field on my customer form. Let's just borrow this guy, right? It's the same field, Design View. I'll just copy this guy, Copy, Control C. Go back to my customer list. Go back to design view, click in the footer, and then paste that guy in there, right? It's the same field. It's bound to the same field in the table, right? Both of these forms are based on the customer table, so we should be able to use them. All right, so there's that. Let's save it, close it, open it back up again. All right, there we go. If I click on somebody, you can see the notes change, right? This guy down here, if it's in the header or the footer, and it's a bound field, meaning it's bound to a field in your table, it's going to be whatever record you're on up here. Okay, so if I click on James Kirk, I can come down here. Now, here's the problem we're having. If you click in the notes field and you scroll, look what happens. It's also scrolling the records. Yeah, I hate that too. It's an, it's a, it's an irritant of mine. Now, I have scoured the web. I've looked for all kinds of source code. I've tried a bunch of stuff I found online. None of it works. And there's, there's, there's Windows API calls you can try. There's advanced programming stuff. There is an event in here dealing with the mouse wheel. It's in the form properties. Um, but yeah, I, I can't get it to work. If anyone out there has a solution just involving VBA, I'm all ears. Post a comment down below. I, I will give you a free membership if you, if you come up with a solution that doesn't involve like ActiveX controls and anything outside of Access. But I did come up with a solution because I use this in my own database. And it requires no programming. That's why this is just an expert class instead of a developer class. You want to know what it is? Can you guess? The solution is to use a subform here. To use a subform bound to the same record, and it just has the notes field in it. Watch this. Delete that. Let's make a customer form. I'll base it on my single form here that just has the notes field in it. So I'm going to copy and paste my single form, copy, paste. Let's call it customer notes F. We'll design this guy. The only thing I want in here is that notes field. And let's go back and steal it from the customer form. Copy. And then paste it in here. That's all you want. Okay, and we'll even grab the corner, go like that. Save it, and let's make sure this is bound to the customer table. Okay, so the notes field actually can get data. Save it, let's close it, and open it back up again. Just make sure we got, okay, we got some data in here. We got, there's some records. Okay, there's the notes. Now we're going to take that and put it as a subform in here. Now, you might be saying, Rick, wait a minute, you can't have a subform inside a continuous form. Yeah, you can. I got a whole separate video on that. Here's that video. I'll put a link to it down below. But essentially, when you try doing this, Access will actually yell at you and then let you do it anyways. So let's take the customer notes form, drop it down here, 
Access says, oh, a form with a subform object can't have its default view property set to continuous forms. Yeah, okay, whatever. Go back to this form's properties and then just set it back. So go to, where are you? Go to single form and just set it back to continuous forms and it will let you do it. This is actually on my list of things for the access team to change that dumb behavior. Get rid of that prompt. Okay, get rid of the label that comes with it. Now we're just going to move this up a little bit and maybe resize it just a hair. And let's see what happens. Save it, close it, open it. Okay, we got some we got some formatting and some prettiness to do. But let's make sure it works. Okay, if I'm up here and I scroll up and down, we're good. Okay, click on Will Riker. Now, if I come down here, click and drag. Oh, look at that! It's just scrolling in the subform. Isn't that nice? And you can still make changes, right? Will Riker, because when you move from from up top to down, down to bottom, it changes. See the little thing? It goes from dirty. Right, if you click up here, it refreshes and saves the record, so you don't have to do anything. Just make sure that these things are linked. If you look at the properties for the subform, make sure your link master and child fields are customer ID, and that's it. That's all you got to do is put a subform down here. You could turn some of this stuff off. You could turn off the record selectors, the navigation bars. That's just going into here, right, and go into this guy's properties. And then where are you? See navigation buttons off, record selectors off. You can turn off scroll bars because that's the form scroll bars. Just look at the scroll bars inside the text box. And then that should look a little better. Okay. Yeah. And then just resize this so it fits. Right. And then it's just kind of it's just trial and error, really. Right? Just come in here and get this to look exactly like you want it. Save changes, yes. You'll spend an hour trying to get this exactly right <laughs> to get it to fit that box. Actually. That would make a great extended cut. We can do that with a little VBA code. I can make it so that when this form opens up, it resizes this guy inside the subform to be exactly as wide as this box is. In fact, I'm going to go do that right now. There we go. That's perfect. Look at that. Fits in there perfectly like a glove. And watch, if you come in here and make design changes later, if you make this bigger and taller, like that, and then save it, Close it, open it. Oh, it resized itself. Isn't that nice? I did that with two lines of VBA code, and I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them, and everybody gets free classes every month. So check it out. I'll put a link down below. But there you go. There is your tech help video for today. Like I said, I tried, I tried at least five or six different programming solutions that I found online that people were posting in forums. Oh, let me try this. This might work. One of them kind of worked, but it, it was so choppy and, and it, it just didn't look good. It worked, but it was like it, everything was jittery on the screen. And I try not to use those Windows API calls unless I really have to. This is a nice, easy access solution. It's smooth. It works great. Just a little bit of extra work to put that subform in there. But if you can find a solution that works and doesn't have any outside components, then I want to know about it. Because I, I even asked ChatGPT, and of course it gave me code that didn't work at all. Um, but yeah, that'll do it. There's a working solution. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. 
There's a little show more down there right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. 
You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.